Tesla founder Elon Musk has announced technology that will make Tesla batteries cheaper and more powerful. It unveiled a $25,000 electric vehicle made possible by a new battery cell. At a live presentation that Mr. Musk labeled Battery Day, he also teased the possibility of a $25,000 or 19,600 pound fully autonomous Tesla in about three years. This has always been our dream, to make an affordable electric car, he said. But the news didn't excite investors, and a $50 billion was wiped off its stock market value. The principal announcement was Tesla's new, more gigantic cylindrical cells. It was claimed that the new batteries would provide five times more energy, six times more power, and 16% more excellent driving range. But the technology announced is likely to take years to implement. Tesla's approach includes integrating the battery to form part of the vehicle structure, thereby reducing the effective weight of the battery. The speech took place in front of 240 shareholders, each sitting in a Tesla Model 3. Central and cheaper Teslas are innovations in how the company designs batteries, radically improving their efficiency. Professor Stanley Whittingham, awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry last year for his work on lithium-ion batteries, told the BBC that tackling all the opportunities is a high risk, but high payoff. Many of us have suggested the same steps are necessary, but Tesla has the investment and will make it happen. Not sure anyone else is willing to do this, he said. Mr. Musk also announced that as well as purchasing batteries from Panasonic and LG Chem, Tesla itself would begin to make them. In April last year, Musk revealed problems with sourcing Panasonic batteries used in its Model 3 Tesla. One expert said scaling up would be challenging. Even with really experienced car manufacturers, we tend to see a very high scrap rate of production in the first couple of years, said Casper Rawls, head of price assessment at Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. Mr. Rawls also warned that so much of the content of the battery is expensive materials. You can only reduce the cost down to a point. Four consecutive quarters of growth has helped Tesla's share price soar, and it's now the most valuable car company in the world. This is despite criticism of Elon Musk that some of his technological advances have been exaggerated. Earlier this month, customer group Consumer Reports released a damning report about Tesla's automated driving services. The research concluded that, for now, full self-driving capability remains a misnomer. And in July, Mr. Musk said Tesla would be able to make its vehicle utterly autonomous by the end of this year. The statement was met with skepticism by industry insiders. Tesla's boss, however, announced that a beta version of the full autopilot software would be available in a month or so. Musk is no stranger to glitzy and sometimes bizarre public statements. Earlier this month, he unveiled a pig with a coin-sized computer chip in its brain to demonstrate his ambitious plans to create a working brain-to-machine interface. Tesla CEO Elon Musk crowed about the company's first $1 billion quarterly profit, its eighth consecutive profitable quarter, and seemed to leave behind the relentless specter of imminent corporation bankruptcy that had previously dogged him. However, Musk made a much-overlooked disclosure during Tesla's second quarter earnings call. Two of his proudest innovations were stuck. These projects, combined with others he unveiled last fall during his Battery Day event, promised to cut the cost of Tesla's batteries by more than half and help bring the $25,000 in EV to the mass market. The new problem Musk disclosed means that 10% of the anticipated reduction in battery cost will be significantly delayed and may not happen at all. The situation also seems likely to hold up the launch of Musk's Cybertruck until next year, putting it on a collision course with the electric version of Ford's F-150, the world's best-selling pickup, which is also slated to launch then. And Musk said the debut of another vehicle, the long-haul Tesla Semi, would be pushed back from this year. In the past, Musk could have been on time to deliver on his promises and faced little consequences. This time, though, legitimate competition is in the way, and EVs being produced by companies not named Tesla have attracted a wellspring of consumer enthusiasm. While parsing the earnings call and writing about Musk's consequential move to iron-based batteries, I read PowerPlay, Tim Higgins' recently detailed new book on Tesla and Musk, which goes on sale Tuesday, 
While Musk is one of the most closely watched and polarizing individuals on the planet, Higgins manages to deliver an even-handed account that brings us up to date from Ashley Vance's 2015 biography of Musk, the prior definitive Tesla account, and has a more urgent feel given everything that has happened the past few years. Had Higgins still been researching the book last year, he had no doubt would have taken a note on the conflicting news. Tesla's outsized profit juxtaposed with its innovative snafu and yet another set piece in the familiar narrative loop of Tesla's 18-year history. Musk sets an improbable stretch goal, which ignites deeply divided opinions as well as rumors of impending failure, leads to a crazed all-hands-on-deck effort by Tesla's team to reach the goal, and ends in Tesla somehow pulling it off and moving closer to upending the $3 trillion car and truck market. 4680 Problems The problems that Musk disclosed last week involved a new battery that he has dubbed the 4680, a gigantic, by battery standards, cylindrical cell, 46 millimeters by 80 millimeters, that has sparked the interest of the global battery community because of the clever twist it proposes for traditional lithium ion. The idea is not only to make the battery cells bigger, but to use a new approach to packing them into a vehicle. Cell to pack, which I wrote about last week, and the reconfigure how engine is carried out by the battery, which Musk calls tablets, these methods manage to eliminate damaging battery heat and the need for expensive modules and packaging that help keep the batteries from catching fire. Musk calls his version a structural battery pack. Among other innovations he described last fall during Battery Day was dry electrode coating, a new process for creating the two electrode involved in every battery. Usually, creating commercial-scale batteries involves starting with tons of electrode powders, mixing them with water or solvent to create significant quantities of slurry, and then coating that into a metal foil to create an electrode. But first, the electrode must be dried in gigantic ovens, and then the solvent has to be removed. At Battery Day, Musk's battery deputy, Drew Baglino, said the company would forgo the oven, skip that solvent step, and just go from dry mix to coat. Baglino and Musk described a coating system that reduces the factory space required to make the electrodes to one-tenth of their former size, decreases the necessary energy that goes into battery production by the same amount, and cuts the battery cost by about 10%. The men said they hadn't completely worked out the kinks, but they were well on their way. There's a clear path to success, Musk said. This is a profound improvement. For people who know battery manufacturing, this is gigantic. Last week, the men said something different. First, the dry coating process still wasn't working. Baglino said the problem was not fundamental science, but a more straightforward engineering solution. Their second point was that dry coating wasn't that important after all. You don't want to overemphasize dry cathode, Musk said. Maybe it's 10 or 15 percent of the cost improvement or something like that. Closer to 10 percent, Baglino said helpfully. Musk continued, now 10 percent is still not something to sneeze at, especially if you're making hundreds of gigawatt hours a year. But it's not the messiah. The meaning was clear. The dry coating isn't happening. At least not anytime soon. And neither are the 10% cost savings. Musk's world. In 2018, when Higgins started researching his book, there was no such confidence that Musk could solve Tesla's biggest problems. Higgins thought he was documenting Tesla's demise and it's easy to see why. Senior executives were dropping like flies. By Higgins' count, at least 50 vice presidents or higher-ranking executives were either fired or quit from 2016 to 2018, many of them the object of a Musk dressing down in front of other workers. Quality was also an issue. Model after model, the Roadster, the S, the X, reached the public by the skin of Tesla's teeth, and the company only managed it by putting inferior, flawed vehicles on the streets first. The doors wouldn't shut. The windows didn't work, or they made a horrible screeching sound when going up and down, Higgins wrote about early Model X SUVs. The problems added up until, in 2016, automobile data company J.D. Power declared Tesla the worst among luxury brands and among the worst in the industry across the board. Complaints about quality control and indifferent customer service continued to plague Tesla. 
But Musk's enduring magic touch, personal charm, a relentless push for the technological edge, and a seemingly unerring sense of what is relaxed and elegant has kept the company well ahead of the pack. Tesla's story is very much of our billionaire-dominated times, of one person bending the world, or in this case, the world's auto companies, significant governments, and future motorists, to his will. Over the last year or so, one major automaker after another has conceded, though typically without saying so, to Musk's vision by going electric and facing the rest of us in the same outcome. Higgins' book might as well have been titled It's Musk's world now. But automakers may be inferring the wrong message from Musk's success. From the beginning, Musk has said that he intends to make great cars that happen to be electric. And in a Zoom chat, Higgins told me that this is precisely what he has done. But with a few exceptions. GM, VW, and other major automakers have done the opposite, making electric vehicles that aren't cool. And by and large, customers have not bought them. The upcoming electric F-150 and by other errands could change that next year. But at this point, Musk hasn't proven that most people are ready for electric vehicles. The real test will come when EVs are at a mass market prices in the mid $20,000 and below. Tesla investors and Musk himself have bet that he will pass that test and continue to dominate the industry. It's kind of the bet of the century, Higgins said. Would you consider buying a new Tesla with an updated battery? Let us know in the comments. So, this was all from today's video. Make sure you hit that bell icon for upcoming videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. 